wasfahu hatta yati Allah bi amrihi forget it forgive them over pardon this and wasfahu turn the page what they say in punjabi mitti pao gali koi nahi rah do there's no problem overlook ignore it it's not worth it that's not my words that's Allah's words let let them bark let them say whatever they want fa'fu wasfahu until when are we going to listen to them like that forever brother we shouldn't respond hatta ya'ti Allah bi amrihi until Allah brings his own decision but brother they have so much money they're spending so much you know they have so much power there are politicians behind them there are media machinery behind them there are millions and billions of dollars behind them what about that and allah responds himself and he says inna allah ala kulli shay'in qadir allah is no doubt in complete control over everything why are you so worried about their media power or their financial power or their political power allah is not undermining that the scheming exists Allah is not you know making us blind to the fact that they don't have this kind of hatred. He's not making us blind to any of that. But Allah is also teaching us how you're supposed to respond. You're supposed to show fortitude. You're supposed to be focused on something much more important. You know there are some young people they spend a lot of time on YouTube or Facebook or for Islam of course. You know, so they'll watch a video and then they'll somebody will, you know, curse the khatib on the bottom, you Muslims are this 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 and this guy will feel necessary to respond to them. Oh yeah, well you kufar, we're going to get you one day and and then, then there's like pay, endless numbers of pages of back and forth because some muslim kid thinks he's standing up for Islam. Just read one ayah. Fa'fu wasfahu hatta ya'ti Allah bi amrihi. Inna Allah ala kulli shay'in qadir. Brother, what are we supposed to do? Just forgive, do nothing? Okay, let's read the next ayah. Wa aqimu salata wa atu zakah. No, no, you should do something. Do what? Establish the prayer. Instead of sitting at some hookah shop until 3 in the morning discussing what the kuffar are doing and then waking up for fajr at 11 a.m. and then strolling over for Jumu'ah half, you know, halfway through the khutbah. Instead of that, how about you work on aqimu salah? How about you work on that a little bit? zakah. How about you work on the way you make your money? Because zakah is not just about giving money. You can't give money if you don't have money. And you, can, you can't give clean money if you don't have clean money. So if you're making your money through questionable means, then you're not establishing zakah. Just saying, you know, ita'u zakah, just that phrase alone is actually cleaning up of the Muslim economy. The entire Muslim economy. Every penny, every, you know, every pound that comes into your pocket should actually be permissible. If you're going to talk about giving zakat, why don't you work on that? وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُ الزَّكَاةَ And by the way, this is the starting point. Or just salat and zakat, right? There's another khutbah about just salat and zakat. What else are we supposed to do? Now understand this. There are people who say that the kuffar have such an elaborate plan to destroy Islam. We need to do something big to respond to them. And somebody says, how about we teach children how to recite the Qur'an? How about we teach our young people what the seerah of the messenger is sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How about we take care of our neighbors? How, do, how about we introduce people to the message of Islam with kindness? How do we... No brother, what's that gonna do? The kuffar are such a big problem, you need to take care of the big problem. These little things, they're not going to make a difference. What are you just going to build masjids? You're just going to run schools? You're just going to teach children? What's that going to solve? So you know what people do? They say the problem is so big, so we need to think about doing big things. And if you're doing something less than that, if you're just you know, in a small circle teaching some young people, or you're just getting some kids off the street and just saying, hey guys, instead of going out and watching a movie, why don't, you, why don't I just meet you at the masjid? We'll just chat about whatever, and we'll go out for some coffee later. You're just doing that. Your work is worthless. Because you know, the kuffar are still there, and their billions of dollars are still there. So... It doesn't count for anything. And how does Allah respond to this attitude? By the way, these people who say we have to have big plans, let me tell you something about them. Because I've gone through these phases in, in my early years. These, these people will talk about big things forever. And practically they will do nothing. Practically they will do nothing. They will sit there and talk about how the kuffar are doing this or that or the other, how we need to do this or that or the other. But sitting there on the ground, nothing actually changes. 10 years go by, 15 years go by. And then they get frustrated. We've been talking about this for so long. Nothing has changed. We need to take more drastic measures. And then they do insane things. Then they do things you couldn't imagine, like what kind of person would do this? 
Now, on the, what's Allah's response? What does Allah want you to do? What does Allah want me to do? What does Allah want every young man and woman in this community to do? He says, وَمَا تُقَدِّمُوا لِأَنفُسِكُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ Whatever you invest, and I'm using the word invest on purpose. Taqdeem is used, you know, in, in archaic English translations, they translate, whatever you send forth for yourselves, which I don't think anybody here understands. Sending forward for yourself basically means investing. When you put money in a, in a, in a business, then you don't get the money back right away. You'll get it later on. Meaning you sent it ahead. A few years later, it'll come back to you. Allah is actually telling us to invest in ourselves. Not just in terms of the akhirah, which is obvious, but even in terms of dunya. There are things you need to improve about yourself. And you will see the gains of that later on in life. You know, so where, where do I begin? Akhi, I, I want to learn Quran, I want to learn tafsir. Why don't you start memorizing Quran? No, 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 tell me, how do I learn everything about Arabic? Okay, hold on. Why don't you start with memorizing the Qur'an a little bit? No, 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 give me something more elaborate. I need something more exotic. You need to invest in yourself. You need to put some time in for yourself. And when you do that, and Allah says, لِأَنفُسِكُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ of, This min is for tanawwa. What that means is, any kind of good. Don't underestimate the good that people do in a community. Don't underestimate the good that you're capable of. And Allah has, this min is very, it's a huge mercy from Allah because the good that you're capable of, I'm not capable of. And the good that I'm capable of, you're not capable of. The opportunities that Allah gave you, He did not give me. And the opportunities Allah gave me, He did not give you. Every one of us has a different set of opportunities, a different set of challenges. And we have to make the most out of whatever life Allah has given us and find a way of doing some kind of good for ourselves and for other people. And if you can focus yourself on doing something good, and you, that you will find with Allah. تَجِدُهُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ It's such a, what an eloquent conclusion. No doubt Allah is in full view, especially of what you do. This بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ you know, is مُقَدَّم, what's called مُقَدَّم for اختصاص. It's exclusivity. In other words, especially the things that you people do, Allah is watching carefully. Allah is, has full view, especially of what you Muslims do. You Muslims are so obsessed about what the kuffar are doing, what the Ahlul Kitab are doing, what their propaganda is, what their attacks are. You're so obsessed with them, and you have no concern about what you're doing. And Allah says, I do not concern myself with what they are doing, I am concerned with what you're doing. Inna Allah bima ta'maluna basir. No doubt Allah is in full view in regards to what you people do. The crux of this khutbah is that on the one hand, the, 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 the Qur'an actually makes us very clear about what's going on in the world around us. But on the other hand, Allah Azza wa also gives us profound solutions. Profound solutions, not simplistic solutions. When people become concerned about making themselves better, making their families better, making their communities better, making their families stronger, and I want to emphasize this, this, this point for you know, especially Muslim communities in the West, in the United States, in Europe, anywhere. We have the institution of the masjid. And the masjid is predominantly attended by men. That's the reality of the masjid today. It's predominantly attended by men. But if you look at the world outside, the world outside is actually attacking the institution of family itself. Families are being ruined. Marriages are being ruined. Parents don't know how to raise kids anymore. Parents don't know even how to talk to their kids. When a, ch when a child becomes you know, a teenager and starts acting up a little bit, parents have no concept, no idea how to deal with this kid. What do we do? Who do we talk to? Where do we get help? They don't know who their friends are. Husband and wife have a problem. They can't talk to anybody. The problem keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And the husband goes to, goes to work and you know, the secretary starts looking more and more beautiful. And that's what's happening. This is the fitna that's growing. But we have masajid that are full for salah. The masjid is supposed to be a place where families find refuge. The entire family. Women have support. Children have support. Men have support. The masjid is supposed to be a place where the family becomes a stronger institution. And the family, the, the family is what makes the masjid better. And the masjid is what makes the family better. These two entities actually have to work with, they need each other. They need each other. Because families need the support of other families. Where do you think good families are going to meet each other? They're going to meet in the house of Allah. 
This is, an, uh, this is a natural divine institution that brings people together for good intention. This is, it's, it's Allah's plan. So when the mas- masajid are abandoned, or when children are unwelcome at a masjid, or when there's no facilities for women at a masjid, they're just a, an afterthought. You know, more than half of our ummah, and they're just, uh, we just find some closet for them. You know, when that happens, then you know what happens. The, the price is not paid at the masjid. The price is paid at the family. Because those women never got a proper education in their deen. So they don't know what it means to be a mother in Islam. Those kids never made good Muslim friends. Because the place where they could have made good Muslim friends would have been at the masjid. They hung out a little bit. I'm not saying you come here five days, five, five prayers a day. That may not be possible for you. But at least bring your kids for Aisha. Okay, if you can't bring them every day, bring them two, three times a week. Just bring them. Make, your, make your ch- part of your child's memory the fact that they used to come to the masjid. This is actually something, it's not small, it's very big. You might think this is, you, and those of you that are working people, you know this is not a small effort. It takes effort to do this. It takes effort to do this, but you will find it with Allah. This is an investment you're making for yourself and your family. You know, you'll see the barakat of it. But these are the things we overlook because we're too busy talking about the attacks of the kuffar. The things that we have to take care of right now that are ruining us and our families, we're not even addressing. You know, this is, at the end of the day, this is my message. Don't underestimate the good that you can do on a daily basis. Its value with Allah is huge. We don't think, you know, we don't think it's anything. It's a huge thing with Allah. That is that, you know, if we can internalize that, inshallah ta'ala, we'll see good effects in our community. We'll see good effects in our youth. Especially, you know what we're going to see? We're going to see these reports they have of young Muslims who become radicalized and become this or that. Well, you know, when you have a proper community structure, when you see one young, young man straying, his other friends say, hey bro, where are you going? Let's talk. And they pull him back in because now you have a community of young guys. And they're connected to Aima, they're connected to scholars, you know. So you, we can actually self-police our own community right now because we're so disjointed. We don't know what's going on in the mind of a teenager. We don't know what they're going through. We don't know what videos they're watching or what's going on in their head because most of their discussions are online, not with actually real people. So I pray that Allah Azza wa Jal helps you and me take this advice more seriously. I pray that Allah Azza wa Jal makes us concerned with things that actually matter and doesn't make us overwhelmed with the, with the attacks and the plans and the schemes of those who seek to hurt Islam. They are not our problem. You know, حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ Until Allah comes with His decision. Allah will deal with them. We have to deal with what our problems are. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us truly self-responsible, responsible for ourselves and our communities. And may Allah Azza wa Jal strengthen this community and every single family in this community. May Allah bless the marriages in this community, bless the parents in this community, give them the ability to raise good, righteous children, ambassadors of Islam. May Allah Azza wa Jal make you people a good model for Islam, for the people all around you, that they, they see you, and through you they see the love the Messenger of Allah had, sallallahu alayhi wa for all of humanity. Like through you they see that this man was rahmatan lil alameen. Because the, the only remnant, the only trace left of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is in this ummah. That's all that's left. So we were all, we're it. We can, they can't see Rasulullah anymore. They get to see you. You know? So may Allah Azza wa Jal empower us to be able to do, to carry this heavy responsibility. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayat wa dhikri al-Hakim. Yeah.